Hello and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce and can you believe it? We made it. We made it through 2022 and this is my top 10 list. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now this is the most definitive list as you well know. I mean, unless you have different tastes than me and read other things and, and like other things that other booktubers like. Uh, other than that, this is the definitive list, so you don't need anything more than that, you know, with those qualifications. But here we go. Uh, this, a couple rules for my top 10 list is um, really anything goes except for rereads. And then if I have named uh, one book in a series that I read, if I read more than one during the year that I'm just going to name one. Uh, try to, trying to fit in essentially as much as I can into one top 10 video. Uh, and speaking of which, we're going to start with honorable mentions because we're going to fit in even more than top 10. Hey, all I said was top 10. I didn't say that it wouldn't be more, so technically there's a top 10 in here. First things first, I'm going to go with Elric of Melnibona. This is, uh, or Melnibone, Melnibone? I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, this is The Weird of the White Wolf. This is one I've been trying to keep up on. This is a, a really cool copy set. I should bring it all in um, that I have. Lots of different versions of this, but this is technically the book three in the Elric Saga. There's all kinds of different opinions as to where you go with it. All right, jumping into the top 10 list, number 10 for the year of 2000. 22 we're gonna go with Stephen King's fairy tale I really as I said in my review for this book really enjoyed it I think Stephen King just does slice of life so well I almost forgot that this was more than just a slice of life book uh, I was just so into the lives into uh, Charlie and radars life uh, and it just it's so easy to get sucked in i just thought the characterization was great maybe really i mean maybe a little long in the tooth to be honest but i don't think it was in it was it wasn't for me all that much to distract me i think let's be honest uh stephen king doesn't really have an editor i mean i know he does but uh the the editor is probably like hey what are we gonna have another stand situation uh where we're going to end up releasing the author's definitive edition anyway, which just has everything in it. Uh, the unabridged version or whatever you may call it, uh, the unedited version. So might as well just jump right to it because that becomes the version that everybody reads anyway. Number nine, I am going with Voice of War by Zach Argyle. This is one that just, it blew me away. It's self-published uh, and it, it had just so many of my favorite things. I, I compare it and I've called it uh, Stormlight Light because the Threadlight series needed more light in it, I guess, apparently, I don't know. But no, it is kind of have, it does kind of have a Stormlight magic system, but it is its own book with its own characters and they're great. And I just, I was really blown away by how much I just enjoyed every bit of it. I already have the rest of the trilogy and I cannot wait to read the rest. Number eight, and this is one I'm actually surprised that it's this low on the list because I, anyway, I just, I read this series. This is, this is the series that I read the most of this year easily. Uh, and that would be Cradle. So Cradle, his whole position is number eight, but Winter Steel, I think is my favorite. Uh, of the whole series so far. I've read up to book nine now. <laughs> Will White's always been really good about it and just got backlogged a bit by his own very successful Kickstarter, which is great. So he's having kind of similar Brandon Sanderson issues. Speaking of, I guess I can't get away with, uh, from mentioning Brandon Sanderson in every other word, uh, <laughs> and in, at least in every video. But the Cradle series, it's blown me away. It's this, you know, if you know it, it's it's lit RPG. It's it's just it's it's like, and some people like it, some people don't. I know Mike of Mike's book reviews just was like, <laughs> I love his 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 take on it was essentially like, why did you guys think that I would like this? Uh, <laughs> which I get. Uh, for me, it just scratched that itch. I love a good like Pokemon game or, uh, frankly, these mobile games that just have you building everything up and and everything. I, 
I mean, I was even talking with a friend, Gran Turismo kind of has a, a, a bit of that where you're just building up your car and making it better and better and then you can race it better. Anyway, that's something that just jives with me so well. A series like this could easily be just a grind, right? You just, because that's what a lot of those kind of games are. I remember grinding so much through my each Pokemon trying to get them to a certain level uh, and it was a lot of grind to, to do that, to just keep battling and battling and battling. You know, that wasn't definitely wasn't the most fun part of the game, uh, but you do it and it's it's fun once you get to and you've done the work and put in the work to, to get to a certain level. Uh, you would think this series might be that way, but it's not, at least for me, I didn't think it was. It was, it's definitely, you get to see each level of the progression, but honestly, frankly, in some ways it's gone faster than I ever thought it would. Uh, and it all works. It all makes sense under just the, the, the magic system, if you want to call it that, or just the whole system. And so it's become a huge favorite of mine, but apparently only number eight for this year, which is just tells you how good of books I've been reading this year. This whole list was so hard to come up with. Number seven was just a very recent read, All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This was a blast to read. It's hilarious. Uh, I, <laughs> I just, I'm so glad. It's, it's so short. I already have the next book up uh, from the library. I can't wait to read it. I got to finish some other things first. All Systems Red is, it's like, anyway, I did, I don't even know what I expected going into it, but it was just from this robot's perspective, uh, a kind of a murder bot as it calls itself. And then it's actually protecting humans and uh, which kind of goes against what it's done in the past to, to at least some degree, but just, it was so much fun. It was just so much fun. Uh, and it was hilarious. I thought it was so fun. And and it's not like, well, and I guess it may be hilarious, might be too strong, but it was it was just like I was constantly <laughs> chuckling at, at things here and there. Uh, and that's perfect. That was that just it just made it a lot of fun. I wasn't like you know knee slapping, dying laughing, but I was I was chuckling quite often. It was pretty good. All right, number six. This was a vacation read for me this year. Roadside Picnic. This was a Moid at Media Death Cult recommendation, and I'm so glad he did. Uh, it's this is it's it's a Russian science fiction book. Uh, I I don't know what I expected. I think the title I didn't like at first, but the more I've thought about it, the more it really does work. Uh, but it's just this in the more this is one that i think i've liked more the more i've even gotten away from reading it because of the concepts just just the idea that i just feel like most science fiction is just so human centered and, and it kind of has to be uh, we're the center of the universe almost even though you know it's not like it's ancient <laughs> astronomy knowledge where we thought we were the center of the universe uh but more in the like humanity like that 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 aliens would want to communicate with us uh, for whatever reason we kind of have that thought um, but this is kind of like what if they didn't even care and we were like ants to them uh, and they, it was just a short stopover be between events or whatever what a, what a Russian concept right uh, and this is it just it's that and it's so good it, it's so interesting you know um, essentially what would happen if you know we went you know we had a picnic on the side of the road and left things maybe a cell phone we accidentally forgot uh, and ants took up those things and <laughs> tried to use them um, what, what would they do with it right what would they see it as would they even have a clue uh, anyway just an interesting interesting thought-provoking book that I continue to, to think about to this day all right, number five, I actually read two books of this trilogy this year, but I think I'm going with the first book, and that would be Jade City. Uh, Jade War was excellent as well, but there's something about, for me, I've always loved the first in a series. The first, uh, I always, I had The Eye of the World as my favorite in The Wheel of Time Forever, uh, because it's just, it, this is what introduces you to this world, to this magic, and gets you sucked into this just amazing place and that's exactly what Jade City did for me uh, into the Call family you just start to love these characters uh, and, and just and so then when events happen that are tragic they're truly tragic and truly devastate you uh, this is one of those that I was so far into it it was it's crazy and just, just such a stand for this family <laughs> such it was just 
it was so good and so um, you know they're, they're, it, the emotions are there the uh, the actions there I mean it just had so many things that I could not absolutely I just could not get enough of and I can't wait to finish this trilogy all right number four this would be Alistair Reynolds redemption arc this is book two in the Revelation space trilogy uh, actually book three though that I've read that um, that I've read in the trilogy that's Revelation space is book one but then there's a prequel chasm city and then this one uh, I highly recommend for some reason I'm not, my bookmark right there in the middle uh, I did read it I promise this is one that I uh, Alistair Reynolds I think might be one of my least favorite living working science fiction uh, uh, authors he, he just has these great concepts this this insane these insane ideas they're just so far-reaching and I just love that he does make this feel like like a future the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special uh, I'm gonna get into some spoilers for it uh, but it, it makes sense to me at least <laughs> but what they do is they run a couple of them I'm not I won't get too much into spoilers but they they run back to earth to pick up Kevin Bacon and then run back to meet up with Peter Quill and then uh, you know and what kind of just stood out to me the most and I get that they're jumping through like wormholes and stuff like that so there's not gonna be a ton of relativity issues but one of the but they're still going at these crazy speeds so there's gonna be actually I mean some degree because uh, it's not like they're just going through one wormhole to get to earth and then everybody's just at the same age same place that they were five seconds ago it just feels like there's gonna be some kind of difference there that especially just going at these high speeds just just anyway it, it kind of was like okay don't think too much about a marvel movie i guess is really the thing uh but anyway what i'm getting at is that and you know no more spoilers here for <laughs> guardians of the galaxy holiday special uh, which was fine. It uh, wasn't anything to write home about, but it was fine. Redemption arc was excellent, and 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 Alistair Reynolds just he's an he's an what is it? He's an astrologist. <laughs> he's got a PhD in astronomy. He knows his stuff. Obviously, the science is constantly uh, moving forward, and discoveries are made all the time. But he really seems to know his stuff, and he does not mess around with the theory of relativity. He knows it quite well, and so uh, this is one of those that. Uh, just excellently done really fun a really good book it just it, it blew me away and and this is just one of those series that I think is making Alistair Reynolds one of my favorite writing authors right now in science fiction I'd go into detail but it spoils so much like everything in this has to do with the big reveal of the last book of the first in well the first book in the revelation revelation space universe which is revelation space uh, so I won't get into just the details other than it's if you liked Revelation Space I like this one even more I feel like uh, I know I guess <laughs> it doesn't have as grand of like a of a climax like Revelation Space did that really blew my mind so uh, but Redemption Arc is still just I felt like he upped his game with characters uh, and, and anyway and just this kind of conflict between kind of your normal humans and the uh, the, con the conjoiners, the, the ones that have kind of adapted themselves to machines or m put machines in themselves constantly. And it's just awesome ideas where, you know, people can just instantly, I mean, they have machines in their heads that they can just hear, you, you know, you can just have everyone's thoughts. So they just have instant communication with each other. It's just so well done. All right, my third of the year. This is just, it shows you again what a great year this has been for reading for me. Uh, we're going with Grand Conspiracy. This is book five in the Wars of Light and Shadow, book two in the Alliance of Light portion of the series. It's kind of an interesting series I've just never seen, but it's 11 books. Now is the time to jump on it because the 11th book has been written. It's being edited currently. It's almost there and I if it doesn't come out this year I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with it it would solely be the publisher though at this point because it is on like it, it is there it is done so at least we have an ending unlike some other authors so um, but 
seriously, I cannot get enough of The Wars of Light and Shadow. Janie Wirtz is one of those authors that I just think is so criminally underrated, underread. Uh, and I know this is, it's a bit of a, of a daunting uh, series. 11 books is a lot, but they, they were planned that way, first of all, so that helps. You know, like the Wheel of Time kind of got out of, out of hand and, and became, you know, this <laughs> trilogy that became 14, 15 books. And uh, that's not this. This is 11 books on purpose. It's, it's planned in such detail, such intricate detail that, uh, it makes sense and there's nothing I mean they're 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 big volumes but they're not like unmanageable but at the same time and, and I know they're dense too but <laughs> doing everything to say <laughs> don't read this now um, but just the things that that Wirtz includes in in here is just it's insane so the characterization first of all is almost second to none there's just there's so few authors that can get to this level i'm going to get to another one in a second here but uh the characterization is amazing but what i what gets me is just sometimes just these little things that that she'll point out in the in in the writing that that like a character notices or is feeling or whatever that you're like yeah as a human being you feel that way and i need to get a better example when i actually do my review but uh but you, you do feel that way, but at the same time, you just I, you never see that like intricate of a detail included. Uh, but I just thought, I just felt like heard, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And so I just can't get enough of these. If you want your emotions, uh, uh, you wanna just feel real emotions. And it's like these characters are willing to do things that just for one person they'll sacrifice themselves if they especially if they're the ones that have kind of they haven't caused the issue but they're kind of at the root of why the issue is happening they're just they, they feel that like sense of ownership over that other character and so this is just it's incredible how uh, how well these are just done and I cannot get enough and I cannot tell you how good of a time right now is to be reading The Wars of Light and Shadow because it's got an ending now's the time now's the really literally the best time you'll be ready for the ending all right book number two this was a hard one because I read this whole trilogy and I had to pick one of them any really honestly could make it but this was I think my favorite Mad Ship is a the book two in the life of ship traders should book one is ship of magic book three is ship of destiny mad ship i think just took this in a direction it's the empire strikes back of of the life ship traders um, sorry i just watched that honest trailer um and uh, uh so mad ship is just it's incredible the, the 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 characters are amazing i loved the farseer trilogy and i can't wait for the tawny man trilogy but this one just blew me away uh that i felt like it just took everything to the next level uh and and i could not get enough the the just the level of caring for these characters i i've rarely seen and like maybe in like Janie words right this was one it just it, the, the foreshadowing, I guess, in Ship of Magic, it's, it's like, I, sh it's like you should, I should have known where this was going, but it still surprised me and still got me. You know, and then and then connection to the Rain Wilds, to this just, you know, that you've got your like main six duchies kind of area with, with the normal people, right, and normal things, and then you've got this whole Rain Wilds, it's got this interesting magic, and what are, what are they coming from, and how, why do they look that way, and, um, but, Mad Ship just, it blew me away with uh, just Hobbes' writing ability, characterization. They're, you know, they're, they're thick chonkers, but they, they earn it. And, and look, I mean, you've got dragons right there, right? Uh, I could not, I cannot say enough good things about this, uh, but the, sh the Live Ship Traders just, it's, you could technically just jump into the Live Ship Traders, you know, first thing, Ship of Magic. You don't really need to know uh, much about the six duchies or the uh, realm of the elderlings at least as far as I know um, you didn't I didn't there's some slight references to the Farseer trilogy that you'd be like oh yeah yeah you know that's there but that's all they kind of just are, are mentioning it it's nothing too crazy so this does it, it stands alone on, on its own uh, highly recommended if you just want 
Uh, well, to get your heart broken, to be honest, I know we're gluttons for punishment as, as readers, but this is it. You're going to feel the gamut of emotions here. All right, and now the final book, the first book, the number one book of the year. And I think you may or may not already know, but it's going to be Words of Radiance. I had a blast with this huge chonker, so much so that my puppy also had a blast with it because I had it out and got a new puppy and then he ate it. Um, and that was tragic because this is actually my review copy sent by Tor. Uh, when this came out, I got a review copy. I don't even know if they did advanced reading uh, copies like they did The Way of Kings, which I do have. But the uh, this one, holy cow, I don't know why I waited this long. It's so brilliant. I'm not going to hold that one up because it's huge. And I'm wimpy. Words of Radiance, though, is just, it's, it's so, it takes everything to the next level. Way of Kings, I absolutely loved. I loved rereading it this year, and it was brilliant re on reread. But Way Words of Radiance, again, a sequel that, that upped the game. It just takes, like, everything from the magic. You learn so much more about the magic, and the magic systems are so, and I, they're so fascinating. And I say magic systems because it just feels like there's more than one. They might use Stormlight to, to kind of power these magics, but there's different ones and there's, you know, like illusion and there's uh, gravity manipulation and, and anyway, it just really just fascinating ways to apply the magic and I love that. That's, it's part of, you know, I did my undergrad in economics. And I mean, one of the things that drew me to it is this kind of idea that things don't happen the way you kind of typically think it might. Hey, there's like an underlying like reason for a lot of things and it's again not just the the most obvious thing but once you think about it then it's like oh that does make sense but i love this like thinking outside the box for this magic system and how it can be used just a little differently like it's like yeah you can manipulate gravity but now you can fly right and and just crazy things like that so everything kind of taken to the, to the next level and you've got scenes like honor is dead but i'll see what i can do i mean right uh you know hopefully that's not too much of a spoiler just a quote uh, it makes you want to read it more which you've already read it but I, it's just brilliant just utterly brilliant so good and i cannot believe that it took me this long to read uh just it's a thousand page book i still am just like it's, it's a thousand page book that reads like a 200 page book you just you just blaze through at least for me uh, not, I mean, I've seen the comments, so it's not everybody, but it really did for me. It's, it's like a much shorter book because it just reads so fast. You're, you're 50 pages like nothing. Uh, and, and, you know, it's not dense. There's a lot of reasons for that. Like, it's not like Jannie Wurzer or Robin Hobb, right? It's, uh, I don't feel like the characterization is to, to those levels, but at the same time, it's great characterization. It's, I think his whole point is to be minimalist a lot of times, and which is why he uses a lot of seds and, and kind of, um, and, and just kind of moves the story along and pushes it along. And then you've got just amazing set pieces, uh, just the powers, the magic, whatever, the world itself with these high storms and everything going on. Uh, just the different places that you kind of just, oh, hey, there's this whole place where they're like, on these islands are they really what are they they're not really islands are they what <laughs> i don't want to go into too much spoilers but just exploring the world is fun it, it, there's just so many places here it's like he literally did throw everything at this and, and yet he's has so many series and whatnot that are different it's like i don't even know how he fits it all in his brain so brandon sanderson does it again i know i've, I've given him some some criticism this year but Man, the Stormlight just keeps kicking everything up a notch, and I am super impressed. And this one, I feel like even Shallan, who's not always a, a fan favorite, at least from The Way of Kings, really it steps her characterization up, and you kind of understand where she's coming from. I've always liked her. I liked her, her spunkiness, her like talking back and <laughs> not knowing when to shut her mouth. I, I really love that about her. But just you kind of, I don't know, just see kind of some of the traumas from her past. You see a lot of things from her. Stormlight Archive is just really proving to be this amazing epic that will go down in history as one of the greats. It's just, it's, it's incredible. And I cannot wait to read more, to read Oathbringer. I'm on Edge Dancer now, so got to read that before Oathbringer. That's, that's what I understand. Uh, anyway, 
Just brilliant series, can't get enough of it. What is in your top 10 for this year? What did you enjoy, what did you love? Let me know in the comments below. I need more, I mean my TBR clearly isn't big enough, but I'm always, it's, it's hard to pass up when someone says, hey, this is a five star, this is a top five book for me for the year. I'm gonna be interested, I'm gonna be taking, taking a look, especially if I see it once or twice or three times. Uh, you know, the more I see it. So anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like this kind of thing, if you read this kind of thing, uh, let's have some fun together and, and then Happy New Year. <laughs> and I'll catch you later. Bye.